Hey everyone, Mike from MyTechie here. Here to show you guys on how to install SQL Server 2008 and 2008 R2 Enterprise Edition. The same steps can be used for Standard Edition or SQL Express. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and show you some of the requirements that are needed for the 2008 install of SQL Server. One requirement is that you have to have a Windows Server OS. You cannot install SQL Server 2008 R2 Standard or R2 Enterprise or 2008 Standard or Enterprise on a client OS. Now with SQL Express 2008 R2 R2 uh, 2008 or R2, you can install on a Windows client OS such as Windows 7, Windows Vista, or Windows XP. However, 2008 R2 and 2008 Enterprise and both standard must be installed on SQL Server 2003 or 2008. Another two requirements that are needed by the SQL Server for both 2008 and 2008 R2 are .NET 3.5 Service Pack 1. However, in 2008, you would only need .NET 3.5. The 3.5 Service Pack 1 is a better idea to install. Both Express, Standard, and Enterprise need this. Windows Installer 4.5, every single one of them need it. Going on forth. Before I get into installing SQL Server 2008, I want to talk about some of the best practices. Now, Express Edition users, this won't be applying to you guys because you guys are probably going to be installing it on a local machine, a client machine, or if you do install it on a server, you won't be able to install it, everything that we're going to be able to install today because of the fact that it has less services. So we're going to go ahead and go to our domain controller and we're going to go ahead and open up our Active Directory users. Now, if you don't have access to do this in your network, you're going to want to talk to your systems administrator. But for auditing purposes, it's a very good idea to install several different users. One being SQL Agent, the SQL Analysis user, the SQL Report user, and a SQL user for full text indexing, indexing and for your actual database engine itself. Now, if you're installing multiple instances of SQL Server, you might want to create more than just four users, four users per instance. Now, and again, this is solely for the auditing purposes, and some compliances require this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install them. Now note, it's a very important fact that they should not be domain admins. Again, I repeat, they should not be domain admins. There's no need for them to be domain admins. We're simply installing them into separate users so they can have be in the domain. When they go to do the auditing, it won't show up as a local system account that's making changes, as well as if a hacker gets into your SQL and compromises your SQL, he won't have access to the actual local system itself for a backdoor. He'll just simply have nothing but a domain user account. So, as you can see, we created four users in my organization unit of service account users. So, we're going to go ahead and get out of the domain controller. We're going to open up the 2003 box that we're going to be installing SQL Server on. Now, it is a great idea not to install SQL Server on a domain controller. If you're using a small business server and you have to install on, on a domain controller because you have limited hardware, it's okay. However, again, it's a very recommended not to install it on it by both Microsoft and other SQL DBAs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up my computer. And you're going to notice that we have the actual SQL disk installed. So we're going to open this up. And I've already installed the prerequisites. However, it is a good keynote that if you do not have the ins the prerequisites installed, the installer of the SQL Server 2008 will actually install them for you. It's smart enough to go ahead and check for those prerequisites and install it for you prior to the installation of the actual SQL Server itself. So once this opens up, we're going to go ahead and take a look. And it's going to bring us to what they call the SQL Server Installation Center. Now, this is a very important feature of the new SQL Server install installer. And the reason why it's so important is because it has a planning utility. Notice if we look down below, we have hardware, security documentation, online release notes, setup documentation, and many more things. Anything that has a world next to it, you're going to need to have the internet. And I forgot to mention, the .NET 3.5 Service Pack 1 and the Windows Installer 4.5 will install prior to the 
uh, installation of SQL Server if and only if you have the your server connected to the internet. It's very important that you have to have it connected to the internet or it will not be able to download the required redistributable packages. We also have the system configuration checker which you can go ahead and it'll actually go ahead and look to see if your system will prevent SQL from being installed by any means. And the install upgrade advisor. Now note you can do what they call an in-place upgrade, which will basically override any SQL Server 2005 or 2000 that you have and upgrade it to 2008 or 2008 R2. However, it is not a recommended, recommended practice that you do that. It is a recommended practice that you do a side-by-side -side install, detach and reattach your databases, or do a backup and restore in your new instance. Then, gradually remove and demote your old instance and just simply get rid of it. What we're going to do is, we're not going to use any of these, we're going to go straight to the installation section and we're going to go to the new installation, add features to an existing installation link. We're not going to create a new failover cluster, we're not going to be adding a node to another failover cluster, and we're not going to be upgrading or doing an in-place upgrade as, a, as this would say. So we're going to go to the new installation. Now this is a brand new server, and many of the checks it's going to check might not be applied to it. However, these checks do apply, or it would say non-applicable over here. As you can see, we passed every single one of these checks, looking for the setup as an administrator, so checking the fact that we have the rights to even install the SQL Server, checking to see if the server required a reboot before we went to go install, and checking the minimum operating system. Those are the main four one or three ones that it checks there. Also the SQL Server product incompatibility, making sure that you don't have any components in your system that might prevent it from being installed. We'll click OK. Now note it's going to want to go ahead and install the setup and support files. And the reason why it does this is actually because even after you install the SQL Server and remove the disk, the installation center is actually available to you after that as well. Some features are not available and you must run them from the disk. However, many features such as diagnostic and maintenance tools are available to you after the install. That's what it's asking you here. So we'll go and click on install. Now it's created its MSI folder and it's ready to do the install of the actual SQL Server itself. Now note, there's many different servers in SQL Server. It's not just simply a SQL Server or a database engine. You also have the reporting services, the SQL Server analysis, the full text engine. Well, there's many different other engines as well as we saw for the reason why we created those separate users. So right away it does a setup support rules and it's going to do a check to make sure that again identify problems that might occur with your install of SQL Server set support files. Failures corrected before you can continue. So we'll click on the show details section and notice that and make sure that you have any unsupported SQL Server products. Making sure that you have any previous release of the 2008 business intelligence packages. Making sure that you have the performance uh, of the registry hive consistency. Making sure that your registry is actually in good health. Um, this doesn't apply because it's not actually on this server. Uh, making sure that it's not a, a domain controller. Now, if you're installing this on a, a small business server, you might get a warning here. Now, warnings aren't bad. However, it's just, again, the best practices that Microsoft is telling you that you should not install a SQL Server on a domain controller. But with limited hardware, it's not going to keep you from going forth. It's just letting you know. It's also it's making sure that you don't have the Windows firewall turned on, and if you do, making sure that port 1433 is available to pass through. Making sure that you have a basics of PowerShell enabled here. And we're going to go ahead and click on the next. Now, I'm going to go ahead and specify a evaluation edition, and 
I'm actually going to go ahead and click on enter product key because I do have my product key available. I'm going to pause the video and then click next before I continue.